One of the most important questions when considering objects in space is how far away they are from us here on Earth. This may not seem like too difficult of a question, I mean in most everyday life distances can be measured easily by rulers or GPS etc. But this is most certainly not the case for objects billions of times further from us than things in our solar system, which we can never physically reach and can only detect the light from. So today I'm going to answer the question on how scientists are able to say with confidence how far away astronomical bodies are by explaining what's known as the cosmic distance ladder. Let's start off with the first rung on the cosmic distance ladder, which is almost certainly the most important for reasons you'll see why soon. The method scientists can measure the distance to nearby stars up to a few hundred parsecs is through parallax. Parallax isn't just limited to stellar distances, everyone has experienced parallax before. It's the apparent shifting of objects with respect to a further away background when viewed from two different locations. The simplest example of this is when you stick your thumb out in front of you and look at it from your left eye and then just from your right eye. Your thumb shifts left and right with respect to the background. This is exactly parallax. Astronomers use this to work out distances to stars. This is done by observing the target star with your telescope at one point in the year and then again six months later. The star will appear to have shifted with respect to the much further away background stars. If I compare this setup to the simple thumb parallax I mentioned earlier, then the target star would be your thumb, the background stars would be the background behind your thumb, and the distance between the Earth at one point in the year and its position six months later would be the space between your eyes. Then by drawing lines of sight and creating a right angled triangle, scientists can relate the distance to the star to the distance between the Sun and Earth and the angle the star has shifted by, which is measured using a camera on a telescope. This is an accurate way to find distances to close range stars, and is also how a parsec is defined. One parsec is the distance to a star which has a parallax of one arc second when using this method. One arc second is one 3600th of a degree. This method gets less accurate the further away the stars are as they shift less and less the further you go out, and it's much harder to accurately detect the parallax. Much like how really far away objects don't seem to move when looking at them from each eye separately in turn. So now we have an easy way to find distances to nearby stars. Let's go out further. Certain stars are what's known as Cepheid variables. These are special types of stars which vary in brightness periodically. Essentially, they'll go dimmer and then brighter again in a regular repeating pattern. The time for this pattern of dimmer brighter is intrinsically related to the luminosity or light power output of the star. So the theory goes that if you can use your telescope and see how long it takes for the star to complete a cycle of changing its brightness, then you can infer its luminosity. This is important because our telescopes are capable of measuring the intensity of light received from the star, also known as flux. Flux and luminosity are not the same thing due to how light spreads out through space. Light intensity follows an inverse square law. This is because of how it spreads out in all directions, so the intensity in a single direction decreases the further away you go. Much like if you have a candle, the light gets dimmer the further away you are from the candle. Inverse square describes how if you are, say, two meters from the candle, the light is four times dimmer than if you were just one meter from the candle. This is because the ratio of two squared divided by one squared is four, and this describes how the intensity of light decreases through space. Back to the Cepheid variable stars. Now we know the flux from measuring it on our detectors, and we also know the luminosity through inferring it by looking at the period of its light cycles. We can then work out the distance as we know light follows an inverse square law. So this allows us to figure out the distance to Cepheid variable stars out to much further distances than parallax. Or does it? You have to remember that to begin with we don't know the period luminosity relation, i.e. we don't know the luminosity to begin with for a particular period, then we cannot know it for any period. This is where parallax comes back into the picture. It turns out that there are luckily some stars which are Cepheid variables and are close enough to determine their distance using parallax. This means we can find the distance through parallax and use this to calibrate our period luminosity relationship, which we can then use for all other Cepheids in the universe as they all have the same period luminosity relation. Now we have calibrated the Cepheid PL relationship. Whenever we see a Cepheid in a star cluster, we can find the distance to the cluster by measuring its period and apparent flux. This is why it's called the cosmic distance ladder, as you have to climb the rungs one by one, as in we still needed to use parallax to calibrate the Cepheid period luminosity relation which we can then use to determine the distance to even further away stars. Excellent. However, there are still star clusters which are so far away we cannot find any Cepheids and resolve their brightness functions. How do we find the distance to those objects? Well, luckily, there are more standard candles than just Cepheid variables. Standard candles, by the way, are objects with known relations between an observable or deductible quantity and their luminosity, which allows us to easily know their distance. The next type of standard candles worth considering are Type 1a supernovae. 
These are results of a set of two orbiting stars known as a binary, with one of the stars being a white dwarf accreting mass from the other and then exploding and releasing energy as it collapses from too much gravity. The peak brightness of such explosions is thought to be constant. This means that every Type 1a supernova has the same peak luminosity, and so if we can determine that for one, we know it's for all of them and can find the distance to any Type 1a supernova. Remember, this is the cosmic distance ladder, and so we can find star clusters which contain Type 1a supernovae and measurable Cepheid variables, and use the Cepheids to find the distance to the cluster, and thus the Type 1a supernova. Then, through measuring flux, we can find the peak luminosity of many Type 1a supernovae, and see that they do in fact have around roughly the same peak luminosity, around 10 to the 36 watts. Now, whenever we see a Type 1a supernova, we just measure its flux and we can work out its distance. Brilliant. Another standard candle is spiral galaxies and the Tully-Fisher relation. This is that the mass or rotation velocity of stars in spiral galaxies is related to the mass of the entire galaxy. This makes sense as mass affects the speed stars orbit due to gravity, and also the luminosity of the galaxy as more mass means more fuel for fusion in stars. So once scientists can deduce how fast stars are moving in galaxies, they can then find the luminosity of the galaxy and then its distance. The speed of stars isn't too difficult to compute as you can look at how light is redshifted at different parts of the galaxy, and that will tell you how fast they are moving due to the Doppler effect. Again, this relationship can be calibrated by using Cepheids or Type 1a supernovae and is another standard candle. There are many more standard candles in astrophysics which I don't have time to talk about such as RR Lyrae variable stars and such, but I want to finally discuss the top of the cosmic distance ladder, the top rung being Hubble's Law. We know that the universe is expanding and is doing so quicker at further away distances from us. This gives rise to Hubble's law which relates the speed at which galaxies are receding to their distance from us, where h0 is the present day value of the Hubble parameter known as the Hubble constant. The speed at which galaxies move away is related to the redshifting of light from those galaxies and so can be accurately deduced via the cosmological redshift formula. The Hubble constant can once again be calibrated by observations of other standard candles like Type 1a supernovae, Tully-Fisher relationship, etc. Satellites have been able to measure the Hubble constant through observation of the cosmic microwave background radiation and the expansion of the universe and find it similar to that from this method of the cosmic distance ladder, making the cosmic distance ladder a fairly decent way for scientists to determine distances in the universe. It all started and relies on the first bottom rung of the ladder, that being parallax from which every other standard candle can be calibrated and used to further extend our measurements of distance and space. If you've enjoyed this video and feel like you've learned something, please consider liking and subscribing. Only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. It's free, it helps out my channel a bunch and you can always unsubscribe. But as always, thank you for watching.